Hello friends and fellow flute enthusiasts and thanks for tuning in to Johnny's Flute Reviews. In this episode, we're gonna take a closer look at this flute. Welcome back, I'm Johnny Lippard, and on this channel we do reviews, tips, tutorials, original songs, and cover songs to showcase the versatility of the Native American flute. If you're new here, consider subscribing and drop a comment below so we can welcome you. By the way, you'll find show notes, links, and also some goodies in the description below. In this episode, we're looking at a flute made by Guillermo Martinez of Quetzalcoatl Music. Uh, this one, is a high D made from Alaskan yellow cedar. Um, and on the back, it's signed and dated 6 of 2005. So this flute does have a little bit of age to it. I think I picked this one also up on eBay. Again, eBay is a great resource for finding a good deal on a flute or possibly finding, you know, a little bit of a rare flute or a hard to find flute as uh, flute players are, you know, kind of going through and cleaning out their flute collection. Um, this one, uh, I actually did a recording, uh, a couple of recordings with this one. The most recent one uh, of filming this is a song called Mast Ibis, and that is from Migration. So you'll hear uh, this flute being played in that uh, particular song. Uh, Garamo has been making flutes uh, for a long time. I'd say the early 90s. He's been making flutes early to mid 90s um, and making a lot of different uh, instruments. He's very active also on Instagram. I always like to see what he's up to there. Uh, making instruments and Mayan harmony flutes, uh, multi-chambered flutes, and also flutes like this and 432 hertz flutes. I know that's been a big conversation and I get quite a few inquiries about 432 hertz. That's a story for another day, uh, another video. Um, I really like his block design. Sometimes I don't like the bigger blocks because they can be hard to put in and get out of flute bags. Um, but this one I find because he's turned it down so far here that when pulling it out of a flute bag, it doesn't get caught. So let's talk about the important thing, the voice of this flute. Here is a dry run up the scale. There's a little characteristic in this voice that's a little raspy. Uh, I can hear that when especially pushing the vibrato a little bit or even tonguing the note, it comes out very, very pronounced when I do those uh, breath techniques into the flute. Um, overall, I think the tuning is really, really well. Of course, like I said, I recorded a couple of songs with this flute and I've performed quite a bit with it as well. So tuning is really important to me. So that's why now in flute reviews, we go up and down the scale or at least up the scale dry and slow so you can really hear what the flute ultimately sounds like. That is the most important thing to me when I play is tuning. If it's not in tune, I can't play um, to other music. Uh, if musicians are playing or if I'm playing to a backing track or anything like that, my flute's gotta be in good, solid tuning. I think uh, Garamo has done a really phenomenal job. Another thing that I really like about this flute, uh, and I'll tell you something that I, I don't like, and it's not, it's not the flute itself, it's uh, something else I'll show you. So what I really like, I'm gonna try to get up here. He's got this block where it can't really move. I'm wiggling it and it can't really move out of place. Of course, it'll slide back and forth this way, but it's got these, um, you know, he's got it recessed quite a bit where the block sits down into this whole entire thing. And so this really helps with wind. It also has a chimney on the block. So playing in the wind, it's a little easier to do because it's got those shoulders on the side to help protect 
uh, the voice of the flute when playing in the wind. Um, the thing that's a little challenging for me, and I think is a challenge for a lot of people with small flutes, that's the thing, is it's a little crowded. My fingers get a little crowded. I don't have really large fingers, but there's a little crowding that happens for me here uh, when I play this flute. The bottom hand is okay. They're spaced a little bit uh, further apart, but these three on the top are pretty close together. And if this flute were any smaller, I wouldn't be able to do um, anything. I've got some overlap. My fingers are touching, there's no gap. Um, so there's some you know, squishing and crowding that happens here. But overall, I'm very satisfied with uh, Garamo's flutes. I'll put a link in the description below to his website and also his Instagram for those of you who are Instagrammers. Um, he has quite a bit on there as well. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews, uh, where we look at a new flute almost every week. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Hi friends, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're interested in growing as a flute player, click below for more information. If you're looking for more videos like this, see the playlist in the corner. Lastly, please consider subscribing so you're notified every time new videos drop. Thanks.